Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You didn't sing your song this morning. Go ahead. Go ahead, Guru. Because it's a beautiful morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, <laughs> mi gente. How about that? Isn't that nice to hear the gringa talk, speak Spanish? <laughs> I hope, we hope all of you had a beautiful weekend. So good morning and welcome to Viva Cafe Con Leche. I am Dr. Lori Monaco with Align Yourself, Inc. I am a holistic practitioner, chiropractor. I am a coach and a speaker, a life coach specializing in transformation and mindfulness practice. I am also a workshop facilitator. I am the weight loss doc, and the badass Buddha coming to you from Southern Connecticut, where today it is beautiful and it has been the last three, four days. It's been in the high 60s, low 70s, crazy, crazy weather, but it's beautiful and sunny today. So good morning, mi gente. <laughs> I love it. Good morning, mi gente. I am La Margarita. You're a spiritual and creative healing life coach. I am your notary, your wedding officiant. I am your poet, your artist. I am magic. So if you need some magic sprinkled on you, come see about me. I am the gladiator guru and welcome to Viva Cafe Con Leche. That's funny that you said about sprinkling magic. So I'm reading the book called The Magic by Rhonda Burns. This is the same lady that uh, wrote and created The Secret. And it's a 28-day gratitude book. You just follow it every day, different every day, but you kind of add on. And one of the things that she said was to sprinkle magic dust, which is you know gratitude dust, um, on different people, and different things, you know, and it's so funny that, I, and in my head, I'm seeing you just walking around, throwing your little magic dust on everybody that you see. <laughs> as, it, as it should be, you know? Yes, um, I agree. I'm having a problem again, loading. With the share, come on people. Get on. We need to get them also to not just wait for the share. Get on the Viva page. I haven't even checked. I don't even know how many followers we have. But if we have less than 500, come on, people. Let's get moving. And especially YouTube. I don't even know. what I think our subscribers are stationary at like 24. No, 29. Let's get moving. Let's get rocking and rolling. Come on, if you think that we are special, come on, who could resist this? Look, go ahead, smile, smile, Guru. <laughs> Look at here we are, come join us. Come see about us. That's correct. And you know, shares on YouTube especially has the bigger reach and it's, you know, more everybody could see it, not just people that are on Facebook. So we are wanting to get to that level where we are just, you know, people cannot wait to turn on Viva. And also when, do us a favor too. We need, we, we, were, we found this out. This was something that Carmen Nieves brought up, which we really appreciate. Um, the, when you share it with people, let them know that it is predominantly an English speaking show. Um, I think there's people that are hesitant, probably all those dang white people that are afraid of Spanish people. You know them white folk. They, they're hesitant because they, they see the name and they assume it's going to be in Spanish. How much Spanish have I spoken? Seriously. So we know, I don't even speak Spanglish well. So it's like, it's, it's all in that. So, you know, definitely get people to, to know that so that they jump in and they're not intimidated by the show, by the name, Right. I didn't even have my cup of coffee yet, and this is how like energetic I am. That's good. That's good. Let's talk about coffee. Here's my mug. I'm gonna love this mug until I'm tired of it. Glamma, glamma. My favorite people call me grandma. I love the mug. That's I love awesome. It. And then the words inside are written in gold, so I love it. Um, so let's talk about coffee. What is coffee? What is coffee? Cafe. This is, this is how I see it. 
Because you know what? I could never run out of words to describe my coffee. So coffee is my celebratory glass of champagne. I'd rather go to coffee than a glass of champagne. It is my lorazepam to calm me down. My, my let me sit and contemplate with self. Café is my sunrise, my first good morning, my warm blanket. Café is an icebreaker between two strangers and familia to two old friends gathering. Café con leche is my soulmate, mi amorcito. Café. I couldn't, I see, I can't speak. <laughs> Let me tell you what the caffeine does to your brain. That's me, that's, that's what I'll, I'll talk to you about. The adrenaline, the dopamine boost, this is me. So that was beautiful. And here's my mug, my love mug. This is actually my favorite mug. I, I just, the words are great and I just love hearts. I'm all about hearts and the color. I like the color. So good morning, we have our fans on. Good morning, Michelle. And Michelle said she's already shared. So we thank you, Michelle. Janine is on this morning. Good morning, Janine. Anybody on your end, my dear, did you get- Yes, yes, yes. The fantastic Lillian Maldonado. Buenos dias, Lillian. Lillian. Oh, and you know what, Chanel, real deal. I love that. I gotta tell you, I absolutely love her, her, her um, name, it's fantastic. Yeah, she is, I love that name. And my cousin Toji, good morning, prima. Janine said, coffee is the, re is the drive behind my force. It is, and my cousin Toji just missed my whole intro to cafe. <laughs> Beauty of recording is that she could watch it again. Yes, watch it. Yes, yes. What are we talking about today? And then I'll go into it. So today, so we have to, we are have, we have to, this is my fault. We have to end a little bit early today. We have to end by 845 because I have a workshop that I have to teach online, but um, I'm teaching a workshop for people who, uh, who work in assisted, healthcare workers and assisted living. And it's a big um, CEU thing that's put together by a woman in Philadelphia, but Anyway, um, I, you didn't need to know all that, but the, uh, we need to end a little bit early today so that I can make sure that I'm set up and online and blah, blah, blah. So I apologize. Um, we can't always decide when these things are going to be scheduled. She wanted me to have the first slot in the morning. So um, today we're going to be talking about, so this works out really well. We're going to talk about coping with kids and work at home. And yes, we've been in the COVID thing for eight months now. And for many, you know, kids have gone back to school, people have gone back to work, but we're starting to see the shift back again. Some have actually never gone back to school. Some have never gone back to work. They still continue to work from home. So we thought, you know, let's talk about coping, you know, coping with this. Let's talk, let's start the conversation on it. Maybe not so much, we have some strategies, but that could be another conversation because I think this isn't really going away. So does Guru, we don't think this is, Nobody thinks this is going away anytime soon. So in another couple of months, we're probably going to have to be reiterating strategies and stuff because with the holidays, it breaks things up a little bit. Um, but this would be a great topic to, to, to speak about. But before we do that, you want to do, we want to do our set our intention. And yes, but, but and before we do that, like, yeah, nobody thinks it or people do think it. I think the best stress reliever for our new normal now in sex. this world is, is to just adapt to your, your moment, to your now. And then as the changes come, you go adapt into it. So there's no expectations. So there's not any, any more disappointments than what we've had because we didn't know. Well, now you know that you don't know that things can change like the wind. So just, we, we, we have to, Embrace what we have, whether we like it or not, and just live in our now. And then it's easier to transition into the changes than as opposed to this got to stop. I got, you know, the kids got to go to school and it, it, it just brings too much tension. Yes. And so that 
Am I doing the intention for today? You are. You are. So the intention is when you get up or right now when you're going through your day, take a deep breath and say, I own my now. I am in my present moment. I own my now. I live in my present moment. Mm. Take a deep breath. Let it out. Smile. Because that's what it is. You if you own your now, whatever it is, and you live in this present moment, nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. You are at the level you place yourself. So place yourself at a level that you're going to say, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. What do I need? Good morning, Tiffany. Tiffany says, good morning, Queens. My daughter, Tiffany, Janine, John, Lindsay, Dab. Good morning. Did you, have a nice, did you have a nice mini vacation? Did you have a nice time, Tiffany? Yeah, she had a great time. Mantra for today, I breathe in gratitude and love, and I breathe out resentment and anger. I breathe in gratitude and love, and I breathe out resentment and anger. Oh, that's beautiful. Which is really big for the conversation we're going to have today. Let, we, we didn't even know what our intentions were. And, and they like send the same message. Own your now. Breathe in gratitude. Yes. So you're owning your now. And live in your moment. So be present in your moment is. That's just that. Breathing in gratitude. Yep. Yeah. That you, that you are alive to to enjoy this moment or to work through this moment it's still yeah, because you make, you, by what you're the intention that you set you're making uh, you're making us conscious you make you're making us wake up at that moment and when you're doing what we're going to talk about today and really anything that you're doing in your life you have to have those lucid moments you have to have those moments of consciousness you can't just run on the automated program all the time and because then you will react rather than respond so that was beautiful. That was perfect for today. So you want to start us off, Guru? And yes, yes. The topic, this topic sounds incredibly challenging because for many it is. For many, you know, you got kids, but you know, you ship their asses out every morning and you have a whole day without them, right? Now, all of a sudden, you're incarcerated with everybody in your family. And so tempers are going to flare. Anxieties are going to go up, you know. You're gonna be like, you're gonna lose interest in the simple stuff like sitting down and having your coffee because now you got a bunch of chatterboxes. So it might, you know, it's gonna sound incredibly challenging, but people have adjusted. I'm sure many people have adjusted with it. Even the ones that just are, have to work from home and sit in their room, that I'm sure they had to adjust not to keep getting up and doing something. So if you are one of many listening on Viva this morning, let me tell you, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for all the mamas that, with all the little babies running around and then trying to work. Oh. So I have gathered some info, advice, go-tos, if you will. So I'll yes. read them. I'll read them. And then the badass is going to share her real-time experience. In, in my incarcerated state. There you go. So the one main one, I've researched like between five to seven um, different reports from different people, right? People is expressing one, two, three, four to help you get through um, this moment. And the main one was be upfront with expectations. So you have to proactively communicate with your employer that your children are home. And so they have to be aware that you cannot guarantee that work or the work cause will be uninterrupted. Um, so if you explain that to both your employers and your children, they have a better understanding of your day. So every morning, just remind the kids, remember, mommy got to work from this time to this time. So make sure you do this and then we'll have a break and we'll have a snack, whatever the case may be, however you handle your kids. Um, and that, that should set the tone. Of course, it's not going to follow exactly, but at least that you're going to have to remind them. Second, set up a virtual babysitters. You know, reach out to friends, to aunts, to uncles, to grandparents. 
babysitters, even teachers that aren't at school that are willing to like, um, right, like teachers age or something. I'm sure they'll all be willing to do some stuff um, and, ar and arrange virtual play dates for your kids. Um, but I think the, the getting the family involved and maybe the kids sit down and whoever um, calling in can read them a story, show them the pictures. I mean, those are things, depending on your children's ages, those are things that you can think about. Three, plan activities that don't need supervision. Give them something to do that you know is going to take about an hour. So if you have that last hour before lunch, give them a plan activity so that they're either all quiet, put a movie on, do something that's going to keep their attention for longer than 30 minutes. Take many breaks. This way, both work and kids have your attention. They feel appreciated. They're not being forgotten or thrown to the side or being yelled at. Fifth is also showed up in all of them. And I think it's important for any, any, whether you're working from home or not, find yourself a space, a nice space that, that you enjoy looking at the walls with a door. If you got the kids, have a door. So, you know, you put a sign outside. If this door is locked, you don't need nothing. And number six is stick to a routine. If you stick to a routine, kids love boundaries. They might fight it at first. They'll, I hate you. They stump off, whatever. But children need structure and routine. So do adults. And yeah. But so do we. Yeah. I did too. <laughs> because they're restless without structure and activities, you know? So we, we that's our job. That's why in the schools they have this 45 minutes of this class, 45 minutes of that class. Right. They got nap time. They got, you know, um, lunch hour. We have to do the same thing home. And number seven is my favorite. Okay. Number seven, use visual cues to minimize interruptions for your kids. Now, mi gente, let me give you a visual of well, how we grew up in a Puerto Rican household where we interrupted. Okay. So we're on the phone. Yes. Thank you for calling customer service. How may I help you? <laughs> Oh, yes, absolutely. And what product do you have? <laughs> yes, yes, you get into it. And then you got this. You got the chancla, the chancleta. You take it off. Oh, yes. Okay, let me hold on. Hold on a moment. Let me look that up. Put it down. If you don't get the hell out of you, throw it. Right? Throw it across the room. Checks them all the time. They're going to sit their ass down for a minute. So you need to... Oh, my God. And it's so true. <laughs> la chancleta, la correa, you know, <laughs> la cuchara. So, I mean, in Latinos, they have a way that when you misbehave and you look at your parent from across the room, la mirada, just a look. Like, a look, yeah. Like, like, espera hasta que llegamos a casa. Wait till we get home. Yes. Yeah. And tranquilo, the They're kids sat down. Work. The kids sat down like, oh shit, I'm in trouble now. And so, I mean, you have, you know your children, you know <laughs> what works. And, there, <laughs> and there's going to be those moments when you're, <sighs> if you're working from home, that they're going to interrupt. You can't pause, you know, been, you might be able to mute, but they can see if you're muting. So you have to have something on the side. You have to have that chancleta. You have to have something that you're just going to lift up off screen, right? You're talking and your arm is up, but they don't know what you're doing. But the chancleta's on the other side. Like, wait till I get off this phone. So uh, I think... Shadil <laughs> says, Shadil says, I have to do it with my husband. Forget the kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because... So you have to... You have to oh, learn... You have to learn who you are, right? You have to learn how your you kids... You have to learn how, how good your throw is and your aim is. Oh, my God. Yes. But you have to learn who your kids are. Yes. And the, the honest truth is that sometimes we send our kids off to school. We come home. We're from work. We're yelling. We're cooking, making sure they get their homework done, take a shower, bye, get to bed. Yeah. Um, learn who your children are and learn which technique of discipline works well for them. And if you're working from home, have conversations, Sunday night dinners, 
use that as a forum to have conversations with your family. Listen, tomorrow's Monday. You know, from Monday through Friday, I'm on that phone. You must be quiet. So what are we going to do tomorrow? And then every night, set up a new theme for them. You know, they like it. They like it no matter how old they are. They, because you're giving them attention. You're, you're, you're giving them something. And then now they're going to appreciate you're busy. But mom said for us to do this. So just try it out. Have that family dinner meeting on Sundays. No matter how small your kids are, those are the smartest. Those are the ones that don't tune you out on purpose. They'll be eating, but they're listening. You know, and that's the best time to get them. So it's like, you got this. We can do all of this. So now I'm going to hand you over to the badass Buddha. She's going to oh, tell us a little, a, a little jokes about her dogs and her kids. Dale. So, so Michelle writes that she goes, it's universal, same in Irish homes. So it might not be called chancleta, but it's, you still get like a shoe thrown at you or something. And listen, it's the same way in my household as well. That's why it was so funny as you're doing it. I'm going, oh my God, that's what I do. I might not have like the wooden spoon at my disposal, but it's like you grab whatever's next to you, like a, 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 a you know, a, a highlighter, a pencil. And, you know, I, but I think the chancleta would be more effective because it's got, you know, it's, it's not too hard. It got, it has a good range. It's almost like a, it's almost like a, a, a what you would call it? The, the thing that comes back to you. Um, because my, I, and here's the thing, kids are not stupid. They have quickly learned that when you are on doing things like this, that this is prime time for them to ask you the thing that they did not know, that they know they're not supposed to ask you because you cannot answer them properly. So you usually give them one of those things like, just go, just go. I can't tell you how many times my daughter has come in when I've done a broadcast and I'm like, just get out, like just whatever, yes, because... And she's figured it out, you know? So I've had to like tell her, uh, you know, before or after. And I'm like, oh my God, you're in such big trouble for coming in on me, blah, blah, blah. I told you not to come in, you know? So she, little by little, she's starting to step back because she know, like she's gotten in trouble. But it's boundaries. What all what you were talking about is, is about boundaries and routine. And if you are not good at either of those, then you are you have got to make it happen because it is really not easy to balance it. It does depend on how many kids you have, how the, what the ages are, what their developmental level is. You know, are they are they special needs? Are they just in need of help? Not that they're special needs, but they just need help. Um, being I'm I'm self employed, so I have more flexibility than most people. However, though, I have long days and sometimes seven days a week I work because I'm catching up on stuff, you know. So I have divvied out. So my senior in high school does her own thing, which I'm grateful for. I help her with certain things. But the, the seven-year-old, I mean, she's in second grade. She can't navigate. We're working on it, though. We're, I'm helping her do things by herself. But she still needs assistance with certain things. So I divvy out nine to one, Monday through Friday, is her time. And I, that means I can't work on my stuff until then. And what I do is when she does have those moments where she's on a meeting, those are blessed moments when they get on with, with the class or they got with the teacher. And I'm like quickly start posting stuff on my, you know, on my social media and start answering emails and blah, 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 so that I could get some morning work done. So it's about creating the routine, but knowing where I can shift a little bit. But it's, it's still really challenging because she's not always, she's getting better, but there's moments where she doesn't want to work and she gives me a hard time and it takes longer and because she's a kid. And like this morning, I had to plan. It wasn't my normal routine. So I had to plan ahead. Normally I get off our Viva show. Um, I, she gets started. I do some, you know, running around while she's like starting her thing and she's kind of running herself. But I have the workshop to teach from 9 to 10, which means my kid's not going to get started until 10 o'clock. So then I thought, oh, my gosh, but I have to get her breakfast ready before I get on the Viva show. So I had to rush to get the, the breakfast ready. And all of this took thought. Like, I had to, like, think and figure it all out and place it all in. And then um, I find out she has a 930 meeting with her class. And while she'll get on herself, she just might not pay attention to the time. So I had to figure out in the household who's going to get her to, like, get on at 930 and pay attention because I cannot stop what I'm doing. 
So it's all these little pieces that you have to sort of plan ahead and then like, and then deal with at that moment in time. And then God help you. You got to forgive yourself for not doing things perfectly. Yesterday, I'm like, got it down. I was going really well. Literally in bed at night, she and I are laying in bed. We're doing our gratitude, talking about what we're grateful for the day. And then I said, mommy's grateful because she got it all done today. I said, we got on all our meetings today, the morning meeting, the afternoon meeting for her teacher. And she goes, mommy, we didn't do the afternoon meeting. And I went, yes, we did. And she goes, no, we didn't. And I went, yeah. <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> but you did everything else right. And, and see, what you said is very important. And because you are, you're, you're an entrepreneur, which means you have no assistance. You have to do it all. Yes. And the importance of, of the kids and and sometimes, what do you think? Do you agree that sometimes the parents right now are realizing how they're really a lone wolf when it comes to strategizing their day, their work day with their kids' school days at home, both at home? You're a lone wolf, right? I think it was a big eye-opener for all of us because, you know, it's one thing to send the kids off to school and then you go off to work. Um, but, but then you don't have to think about, but then when you have, when you're all together and you have to figure out what am I going to make my time, their time? Um, what about lunches, dinners? What, that's different now. That, those are all different now. And, and there's, there was, you know, problems with technology and they were all, the, the schools were trying to figure out things and, and it, and it was, it's just, it was a lot of pieces, always moving, always shifting, always changing. And it continues to do that because some schools are hybrid, then they're, then they then they offer my daughter's uh, the, my senior. She was like her school would close for two weeks because they they had an outbreak, and then they would go back in. And my my little one, she's full time homeschool. Like she's still part of the school district, but she's full time distance learning. So it falls on me. And at first, I was just like, oh, I really want to do this. You know, I kind of would really like the break from her. I love my daughter, but I sometimes you need that mental break and. Um, and I want my time for my business. And, but then, you know, we just, I had to create a rhythm. I had to create the, the routine. And, and I love the piece that you said about sitting down on like a Sunday night and going over like the week. It's, it's almost like you're having a meeting at work. You know, I like you have a board meeting with like people and say you're planning, this is what the week is going to look like. This is what's coming up in the next two weeks and blah, blah, blah. And you sit down with all your your co-workers well that's what you have to do as a family you, you have absolutely to have the meeting and say this this and this because I have a very regimented schedule although not as regimented as some still but I have things all set up in my google calendar and I have this this and this blocked out and when like my older daughter comes in and says I need you to bring me here or I need to pick this up or I need to do this I'm like or I need help with my homework I'm like when well, right now, I, I don't know what to tell you. I can't help you, you know, because it's, it, it, those moments don't exist in my world. Sometimes they do, but most of the time they don't. So she's had to adapt. Grum she would grumble about it, but now she's gotten better. And it's just a matter of everybody working together. I found a funny quote, and it says, it may take a village to raise a child, but I swear it's going to take a whole vineyard to homeschool one. <laughs> I love that. Jonathan Pookie. I love that. Yeah. Bring on the wine because I need to be sedated for this shit. That's right. Man. Um, I haven't drank this much ever in my life. I got to say good morning to Carmen Grandiva. Good morning to Maria de Pilar, Peru's in the house. AC Santiago de Astorga. Good morning, says Maria. Jonathan says so true. It is so much easier and, and less um, mind stress when you know you have help or even when the kids go to school, right? Yes. The mindset of not having to worry. It is tough. Then he said, game plan with the kids, just talking about it. We do it at dinner. Hopefully one of us remembers what we talked about. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> I like exactly. that. When, <laughs> when you after a couple of glasses of wine, you're not remembering the conversation. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to do is go with me. I love you, man. You know, <laughs> Tiffany, Tiffany's in the house. Good morning, Tiffany, Brian. Good morning. Good morning, Tiffany. 
So, you know, here's the deal. It's, it's taken moments where I've had to walk out. Uh, I mean, I've heard things coming out of my mouth with my getting very frustrated with my little one. And I think the big game shifter or the game changer for me over the last two weeks, honestly, has been going through this book that I'm going through. Not that I'm plugging the book. It is a great book. I recommend it, but I'm not saying you have to get it. The, the, uh, the magic, because it is forcing me to put gratitude in. It's not that I don't do gratitude. It's just that sometimes you get so caught up in so much bullshit that you forget the little other routines that you've set aside to ground yourself. And the gratitude grounds me. And so because I've had this constant gratitude piece coming in and I've included my seven-year-old in it, which I did not do before. So she hears what I'm saying to her. I hear what she's saying and it's made me calmer and I feel so much better. And I feel like a, a little bit more in control of how I'm working with her, what my, like what I need her to do, what she needs, she needs to do. I'm a, <clears throat> I grew up in a very enabling household. So that's always been a constant struggle for me. Being enabled and enabling people. And mm -hmm. I've even pushed that aside and said, okay, no, you know what? My daughter is old enough. She can start really doing a lot of things on her own. Why am I thinking she can't? So I'm testing it. I'm testing the waters. What are you capable of doing? What can you do um, on your own? And she's, she kicked and screamed about it a little bit. But then once she sees like she's doing it, it she feels proud. So she's more, in, I got this mom. I got this mom. I got this mom. And every time she says that, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yes, I'm going to sit over here. And, you know, and it's, and it's great. But one thing I do want to point out again, I am self-employed. Um, my time is my time. It can be any time. And I love what I do. So I don't mind working a lot of hours, but I've heard this a lot from clients and this is the part that I get pissed off about um, that there's a lot of companies out there. They've come to this idea that, oh, but my, they're home and you're working from home. So you should be available 24 seven. And I've had clients telling me this, that they're checking emails really late at night because they're constantly getting emailed. Their normal hours used to be eight to, to six, eight to five. And then they would commute back and forth to home and then they'd be done for the day. But no, they're like still working. They work on weekends. Now, some of that is just absolutely, it's unnecessary. It's, it's not needed. Some could say it is, but for most, um, these companies are just taking advantage. So yep. you need to take, you need to step up. You need to speak to your coworkers and you need to set boundaries as best you can, or just, just jump in and set the boundaries and say, I'm not checking emails between this time and this time. What are you going to do about it? Because you know, they, I think a lot of these companies think that you're just sitting around eating bonbons, watching, you know, the daytime things while your kids are on school, sitting, you know, going out for, and I know so many people that aren't doing that. They're barely getting by. They're, they're doing their work. They're helping their kids. They're exhausted by the end of their day. And so if that is you, jot down what you're doing, how many hours you're putting in, what your day looks like, confide in other you know, ask around to, to other employees, you know, the, your um, employees, your, your coworkers. Are you feeling this? Are you going through this? Is this how your day is? Then either you yourself or collectively contact and create, and create a communication to between you, you all and the higher ups and say, listen, this isn't sustainable. And if we're going to keep doing this, we need to figure something out. Sometimes we'll give them the benefit of the doubt that the the company maybe isn't really aware of it. Maybe they're just so caught up, they're not thinking. And it helps to have the reminder. That's what the awareness piece is about. But maybe they are fully aware of it and they just don't care. But you would like to know the difference, you know? And, and I think that's been a, the biggest challenge for people. And especially as we come into the winter, let's face it, it kids are gonna be back homeschooling. There are already schools that are shutting down permanently. Um, but a lot of us are betting those are still in school or saying that after Thanksgiving, we don't think a lot of schools are going to be coming back. Um, a lot of colleges aren't. They're ending before Thanksgiving and they don't come back till the end of January. Utilize your college students that are coming home to help you with younger siblings yeah. um, or to help you in general, help you cook, help you do, do whatever, right? 
but start planning ahead because we cannot sustain this until March, April of next year. It's just not going to burn out. You're going to, you're going to hit. Oh. Yeah. And I wrote down what you said. I think that if we keep gratitude in our hearts, we are aware of the things we need to tend to at the beginning of the week, Sunday night dinner, do a spreadsheet, do post-its. When they wake up in the morning, let them find a post-it note stuck to their forehead saying, get up, brush your teeth, get cereal, blah, blah, blah. Do not knock on my door. Sometimes it's a training. So you're going to have to train them for probably a month. And put a sticky on their nose. Make it fun. Make that learning of them being aware of your work schedule fun. Because then they'll appreciate you. I like the sticky thing. I got a yeah. forehead. I could fit like two sticky notes on my forehead. It's so big. Do it. But stick it on their nose. Put it on yep. the toilet seat when they're going to sit down. Stick it on their toothbrush. I mean, be great today. I love you. Thank you for helping me. You got to compliment. You got to make them feel like they are a part of your day so that they can help you because who doesn't like to help? Who doesn't want mommy to, to say, look, mommy, I helped you and then get something at the end of the day. Plus, that's your job is to train your child, not the teachers at school. That's so now, now it just like went right back to how it was always where the parents are responsible for the growth body, mind, and spirit of their child, and a lot of parents can't deal with that. So yeah. that. make it fun. Make it learning and make it fun so that they can have awareness and an understanding for what you are doing home with them and then the time you get to spend with them. And then it's it's happier in the household. So do fun stuff. Do that sticky note, you know? Like, I, I mean, just make it fun. And there's many ways you can make it fun. Sunday nights bake cookies, have, if you have more than one child, do it in a, and then put their names on it so that every day, remember, don't eat until 1045 so that, you know, they each have their own and you're going to check them afterwards to make sure that they eat the whole cookie bin, but give them that responsibility so that they can have gratitude and understanding what it is to be aware of a day's activities. I think the, the big piece is the planning and, and, it, um, and we fight it, you know, and we fight routines, we fight planning, but in the end, we, we need it just to help, <clears throat> help guide us. It, it decreases stress for sure. Um, and it's not saying that, you know, you don't want to be so rigid that you, re you plan and you create a routine and then it veers, you're like, oh crap, you know, and you stress out about it. You have to know that there are shifts, you know, there's ebbs and flows and that you have to shift and flow along with it. But if you have a general plan and the kids are part of the plan and that you'll be able to be more successful and it is sustainable for a longer period of time. And I love that. I love how you, you know, giving, putting notes and making the kids more responsible. And it is true. Kids do like to help, you know, even the ones that look lazy and they're just, and you have to ask them like five times, can you do this for me? But <clears throat> if you say to them, tomorrow, this is what I need you to do. And then you say, these are some of the, these are the times that I need you to do them. And what's the key word though? I need you to do this because mommy trusts you to help her wear her day. Pookie wrote, good morning, my beautiful Arjanis. Pookie wrote, the training is real. Repeat habits, they will follow. Ours are yeah. trained, LOL. Those, few, those extra few minutes help. Then he says, amen to that. Kids love to help, especially when it's not in a punishing way. Yes. Make it fun and reward little things. Remind them how they helped. Because then they feel like they matter. A lot of kids, we're up here and we're talking and they're down here. Yeah. So even though we're, we're not being mean or angry, we're still looking down at them. So if we're like, hey, listen, Madison. I, I, you know what, I, you do this very well. I've watched you and I really need your help. Do you think you can do these two things for me while I'm on this call? Start small. And, and you know, I learned when my daughter was 13, when I was going to murder her like the fifth time, to, to, to say to her, and it totally turned everything around. Instead of being upset at what she did or like, I help, why do you do that? And blah, blah. I, and the first time I said it, I thought she had whiplash the way she looked at me. And it was smooth after that. 
I said, I am so disappointed in your actions because it separates them. It's like an LLC. You can't sue me. You got to sue my company, you know? So when you say that to your child, they're like, oh my God. So what I did was really that wrong. See, now they're not saying I'm a bad person. They're not thinking, oh, mommy said I'm a bad person. I did something I shouldn't have. And that's how it is when, when we give them them little chores. And, you know, I had my grandkids do chores this weekend when I was up at their house. And my grandson didn't want to go out. And I said, do you know what I would give for the leisure to just, somebody says, Margie, you want to go to the movies? For me to say, hell yeah, let me get my sneakers on. And he just looked at me and I said, never take advantage of life. When opportunities present themselves, go for it. Because if you don't go to the movies with your sister, you're going to sit kissing the television, playing your game, yelling into a screen, right? Take your ass to the movies. He's like, all right, Wela. And he went. And so sometimes they need to be reminded that there's life outside of their game, outside of their room. But they they help with the chores and stuff. And and you know what? We, our kids are our kids. And we got to navigate them how they help. Go ahead, Lori. I'm sorry. I just took your moment. Do the post-it. Beautiful. That was absolutely beautiful. I think, I mean, we only have a few minutes left. And, the, the, you know, the key, the key points here today are, you know, it, it's, it does take time to create a routine and get everybody on board, but, but communication is key. Clarity is key. Like you can't just keep changing the routine. You have to all decide what routine works best and what you're going to do and implement it and, and stick by it. You can't just say, this is the way the routine is going to be. And then you don't even follow it. Healthy boundaries, you know, and I shut my door and I close it. That means you can't come in. And that's a constant challenge with my little one. She doesn't seem to get that. Um, neither do my pets, and uh, they're always knocking, scratching at the door, whining to come in or out, whatever. Um, the other thing is forgiving yourself because you aren't perfect. Nobody's perfect, and you're doing the best that you can. As long as you keep pushing yourself to do better, that's what we ask for. It's like when you just say, forget it, F it, I'm not going to bother, and then have the nerve to complain. That's different. But if you, are, you know, you have to forgive yourself. We, we do have moments where we just get so damn tired and we just have too much in our head and our plate. And then somebody's coming to ask you for this and somebody's coming to ask you for that and you just blow up. Um, but you have to forgive yourself. You also have to tell others that you're sorry as well if that happens. Um, and the same goes for them. So if your kids blow up at you, you know, always make it a household where it's filled with love and appreciation, but also honesty. And <clears throat> being emotional is just, I mean, that's who we are as, as humans, you know? Um, being responsible for what you say and you do. So if if you're if you say this, you gotta you have to be responsible. You can't take it back and and do it all the time. I mean, we do say things we don't mean, but the more you put that in your head, the more aware you become of what's coming out of your mouth. And you can either stop it before it comes out or stop it right after it comes out. I mean, there's been times where I've been so stressed that I've snapped at my little one and I as soon as it came out, I was just like, oh, you know, and I stopped and I said, you know what, Charlotte, I'm sorry, mommy, mommy, sorry, that was not right. I should not have said that to you. And I'm just very tired and I'm very frustrated. I need a minute. And I said that that wasn't okay because it, it really wasn't, you know, and, and she's, and she says, she just nods her head or she'll say, it's okay, mommy. And she'll, and she lets it go off, which I love about her. She doesn't hold it. My middle one was always the one that held it, but she doesn't. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, but in those moments where you're really grounded and clear, you do say the gratitude. I'm so grateful. Like I said that to Charlotte the other day, we had a flawless morning, flawless like day. She did everything. She was on top of stuff. She did her work on her own. And I said, Charlotte, I am so grateful you did. You, you, were, you rocked it today. You were awesome. You were amazing today. I loved how you, you worked today. And she got this little proud smile on and she was so happy with herself, you know? And that right there is just gonna keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it to uh, help you guys work together, you know? I'm trying to think, take breaks from each other. Organization is a big thing. Be clutter-free in your space. Make the kids accountable for as much as they can handle based on their age and developmental level. Don't, do not enable them. Take breaks from... <clears throat> what you're doing and each other and create a healthy workspace for yourself and your kids. 
So that leaves us with like a minute. So I'm going to leave that to you. You close us out. Well, I want to, my sister said, hello, ladies. Hello, Connie. Thank you. So our Janice and Connie. And so, yes, so we are loving our cafe. Don't forget to send us your selfie, please, because we're building that up. And I am La Margarita, your gladiator guru. And remember, breathe in the beauty and breathe out the bullshit. Namaste. Namaste, everybody. Be you, be real, and be extraordinary. We'll see you on Thursday. Speaking about kindness. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs>